continue on with my story of the one that I love more than anything in life is sometimes hard because I had a loving spouse for 20 years of my life across the continent, across the sea, across different lives and different, well, opportunities of work for me. When I met her, I was in a different country, a different land with different society, different rules and different etiquettes at hand. When we returned to the States, we had a journey, we had a challenge, we had a difficulty, and we had a lot of difficulties in life. I don't have to tell you how it feels to have God in one's soul, but it's sort of marvelous because a lot of the animals like to come near me because of that truth. And it's hard not to want to pick them up and pet them and do things with them, but in truth, we can't do that with the animals of the world. Now, if I get a little distracted because of the playfulness of a squirrel who's curious about me and hears my voice and knows to come, I'm sorry for that, but that is what happens when you trust God with everything and you love everything God makes. Well, most all animals, anyway. In life, we have a moment of time to say that woman who came into my life on a huge monumental prayer for me based on where my life and spirituality was at that time really changed my entire existence. Not only did she wow me with her intelligence and she entertained me with her wit, but she really knew how to humble me at times to the point that I would say, I'm sorry, you're right. I am wrong with my opinions on this. That's the kind of woman a man wants in his life. At the same time, when I lost her, I met another girl based on a prayer. A very clear and devout prayer that I talk about in my book that she inspired me to write. It's really a story of a love triangle of two women who are powerful and wise and different than anything I'd ever met or seen in life. Both most, the most beautiful women I've ever experienced in my life for who they are in their soul time. And real time relationships are like that. They are very real, they are very vivid, and they never, ever leave our soul. The one that I love is very obvious to me. The one that I need is one that's definitely needed by me. The challenge in life is that other people in the world start to interfere with God's plans. And when other people start to enter into people's relationships, they really start to ruin the relationships that God has at hand. I've seen a lot of beautiful women on campus want to do something for me, but some player walks up and says, hey, don't do that, he's a shitbag, and you know it. Not me. And openly, the funny thing is, that boy doesn't know me at all. That child doesn't know my story, doesn't know my background, he doesn't know what I've been through, he doesn't know the abuse I've experienced from police, and he doesn't give a shit at all. But that young woman is being moved by the Holy Spirit. That young, beautiful child of the Lord was trying to do what was right. But when they didn't do that, they didn't do that. And openly, what happened was, a man got lost. A man got lost because for every time someone walks away from helping someone based on God's house, they lose a blessing for their own life. It doesn't mean go out trying to help everyone. It doesn't mean go out and try to spoil someone. But it does mean that you have to learn discernment of who is really trying to move their life forward and who is just content being in the middle ground, always playing for pocket change or someone who's really trying to make a change of the world around you. Many young people are still very young in their mind. We know from medical research and other scientific work that a true adult becomes an adult around age 24, presuming that everything is functioning in their heart, soul, and mind at the right stage and, well, grace of God. There are certainly plenty of men who have never grown up, that they literally think and feel they have rights to play a game on someone's life. Then there are the young men who want to be super cool, and they'll always say, I got you. Really? Do you have me in the moment like my good little friend Ethan, who always has me in the moment of time? Or are you that black child or that white child or that Arab child or that Hispanic child that says, I've got you and I never see the result of what that means? You see, we can be cool with our words, but what does it really mean with I've got you? Because God has me. God put me on the path to run into you. And if I didn't acknowledge you at first, it's because I wasn't looking at you. I wasn't thinking about you. I was just trying to get around the 
herd of young men who were coming down to the, the Green Street to get some food like me. And maybe I was also maneuvering the sidewalk because some little white shit Catholic child boy <coughs> ruined my cart. Which is what helps me to walk with the problem I have now with my heart.